Hello and good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It is Bow Wow Bill. Uh, welcome to another one of our live streams. I have the marvelous Sarah Baker joining us. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning. Is it still morning where you're at? It is. I'm only an hour ahead of you. So okay, it's cool. 10 o'clock my time. And I'm on the Pacific uh, Coast. So. 06 my time. Sorry for the delay, guys. Yeah, we were chatting. We were back there uh, talking about Frenchies and how bad they stink. <laughs> stinky, stinky yeah, parts, stink. right? <laughs> totally. Um, so as always, let me share this really quick. I'm going to go to my um, Facebook page. And while I am doing that, I'm going to share it to Dogs Chatting and Triple R. And uh, would you mind doing a quick bio? Tell people where you're at, uh, what you do, uh, all sure. that. Sure. I am, well, obviously, Sarah Baker, owner of Baker's Acres Canine Academy. I know it's a really long name. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, we live in Springville, Utah. For those of you who don't know Utah very well, we're about an hour south of Salt Lake. So shout out to Heather Beck. I'm about 50-ish minutes from her place south. Great. Um, anyway, that's where we are, Springville, Utah. Um, I've got two kids, a seven-year-old and a three-year-old, and a husband, which is my third child. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and then we have two dogs, um, Bandit and Chico. They're kind of famous. I don't know. Bandit and Chico, um, what kind of dogs? Bandit is an Australian Shepherd, and Chico is a Chowini, technically, but he's a mutt. <laughs> so, looks like a Chowini. Oh, he is a Chowini. Totally. He's got both parts of... He's definitely Chihuahua, but he's definitely a Dachshund, too. He'd be really good at, um, like, IPO stuff, like protection dog stuff. I, I really think he would. Like, he's totally, like bad a going in for the bite and like a shake and stuff and like barking at you like Rah! <laughs> well i think you know i'm a huge fan of miniatures and i'm just waiting like i buy um here let me show you a piece that i just bought from this guy on instagram his name is what the hell um nice. but it, it's his miniatures right here you know they're like miniature storefronts nice. and whatnot cool. and then what i'm waiting for and it has a little light too let me turn it on for you so you can no, that's Pretty legit, cool. dude. Isn't that cool? I'll put down his uh, Instagram, but uh, wonderful yeah. art. But what I'm waiting for with these little dogs is for somebody to have little little jute rolls and little and and uh, little uh, little bite equipment and little IPO <laughs> stuff, man, and just have a Are mini you? IPO uh, uh, qualification. Is, there know. is, is, you know, if anybody's watching right now. Go and find the YouTube video of the little. There's a Chihuahua. Here, I'll find it right here. Let's see. Let's, yeah, you uh, got it. Well, I'll find it. What is it? Ch uh, Chihuahua there, doing what? There's like a little Chihuahua that does bite work. I can't remember what his name is, but he's he's like he's probably five pounds wet, <laughs> and Chihuahua he's got his wet. little he's got his little bite sleeve and his little. He's so cute. Not like, big. I don't know is what it, I don't know what it's called. The I famous Chihuahua, the famous famous Chihuahua, practice an ID, IPO defense. So let's uh, let me see if I can pull this up for everybody. Does anybody and, know what I'm talking about? Well, I'm putting okay. it up here. Anybody watching? Throw it on there. Yeah, I'm putting it on here, right here. You have so. to watch the Chihuahua. And then I need to put my little, audio. I think it's a little black and tan Chihuahua. Yeah, this is it. Yes, I found yes, it. Yes, yeah. Ludwig. Ludwig. So let me put my sound out on this. this. Uh, yeah, that's it. That's TV it. Speakers here, and then I'm gonna play. This is <laughs> I don't know where the heck we're you know. <laughs> so. <laughs> but that's the way I that's the way I like it. <laughs> Ludwig, the famous Chihuahua. This is him. Look at this little man. <laughs> Look, he's got his little bite thing. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, that's so great. <laughs> I always call my little guys mini mouths because they really, they, they're yes. super 
you know? I swear, they they bite hard. Yeah. You know, speaking of bites, this is the only, Chihuahuas are the only breed, Chihuahua and Dachshund <laughs> are the only breeds that have ever bitten me. <laughs> really? Yeah. Knock on wood. I'm like Chad <laughs> Mackin. Uh, I would always get bit by boxers. Oh, I've never been bit by a boxer yet. Yeah, I would always. Now I don't. Uh, but yeah, they would. When I heard Chad say that, I was like, oh my gosh, me too, man. So let's say hi to everybody really quick. We got a bunch of people joining us from all over the world. If you guys don't mind, let us know where you're from. And I still need a share. <laughs> I got distracted by the bite work chihuahua. Uh, but yeah, in the comments, <laughs> let us know where you're from. And as I share this too, if you wouldn't mind hitting that share button, a lot of people like to catch this live. And if you have any questions for Sarah and I, go ahead and type them in the comments. If, it, if you have any comments, uh, let us know. Um, and Nicole's like, my Papillon would love to go with me, my mouth, with, with my mouth to the club. You better believe it, man. I Absolutely. see, you know, and that's what, uh, when we were talking to Dave Croyer, when we were asking of difference between pet world and dog world, he's like, absolutely nothing's different. But when I was talking right. to Bart Mellon this time at the IACP conference, uh, he, he, he put it pretty, uh, succinctly. He was like, look, in the, in the working dog world, we're trying to get these dogs to go, go, go in the pet dog world. We're trying to get them to stop, stop, stop. Right. You know, right. but we see, and, um, and Jay Jack has a wonderful, uh, new kind of bite work, uh, sport that he's working on. And yeah, the um, it's like a a tug thing that hangs in the ceiling, and then yep. you teach the dog to pull on it, and then you release it if they play by the rules. Whatever, yeah. I don't know. I don't know much about it other than the the fact that I've seen Tara Isaacson, another Utah dog trainer. She her husband created one. He just went down to Home Depot and bought the equipment and and created the, their own style of one in their barn. Yep. Well, and they're, and they're stable. when you watch these IPO trials and whatnot, you see that it takes, especially for um, a decoy or, or somebody that they need to know what the heck they're doing, man. Absolutely. That's doing. just not any old Joe Schmo in a suit. You get no. hurt. Well, not only can you get hurt, but you can screw up the dog. You can screw up yeah. the training that this person has been spending years doing. And and that's and that's another you know conversation is like how easy it is to uh, you know mess that up and and what Jay has done is he's kind of put and structured it in a way that the human and people that might not be capable of doing this type of bite work it separates that human element as far as uh, having to be interactive with the actual equipment with that dog. Um, and then leverages that to allow it to be uh, tethered so that dog can uh, really, really get that fulfillment, especially right. these dogs that are really, really driven to bite. And um, it gives them That's an cool. avenue. That's like cool. A, you know? That's cool. So how long have you been working with dogs? Oh, how long have I professionally or... <laughs> Uh, professionally, we've been working with dogs since 2014. Okay. Um, and, but, and I see my mom's on here. Hey mom, what's up? <laughs> hey mom. <laughs> hey mom. My mom, um, she did training back in the day, did old school obedience. And, um, so growing up, we always did training as it were. And, uh, then I got into agility, um, and did agility from 90. When did we move to, when did we move to uh, Colorado mom? 98. <laughs> uh, I think I was 15 when we okay. started agility and, uh, went, I did that for a few years until I went away to college and uh gave up dogs for quite a while i did horses first actually i should go way back i did i worked with horses um from my earliest horse riding lessons at age eight to um until when we moved to colorado we couldn't find we didn't really find a stable close by so we gave up on horses and switched to dogs there you right. go thanks mom yeah <laughs> 98 to 2005 see 
I leave it to my mom. She remembers everything. Yep. Sometimes. <laughs> um, anyway, I'm rambling, but basically I've always had dogs and horses in my life and there's a lot of crossover. If there's any horse people on here or dog people that used to do horses or both, you're doing both at the same time. There's a lot of crossover between horses and dogs. Yep. Um, and in fact, with any, any animal, if there's anything I've learned recently, it's the fact that, and you say this all the time, Bill, we are stewards over these animals. And I was thinking about it just before we got on that a lot of people think that animals are placed on the earth to, to serve us. Mm. I think it's the opposite. I think it's the opposite. We can learn, we can learn a lot from other species, other animals and how they treat each other, how they communicate with each other, um, cross species relations as well. Um, anyway, not to get too <laughs> philosophical here, but I love it. You know, Bob Bailey coined the law of learning and that's what we were talking about, you know, is that the, the, these animals, I mean, once we understand how they learn and then we can apply it, um, to multiple situations, multiple animals. And Bob Bailey, he built these contraptions where you put the animal in and um, and the, the animal would, would work based on positive reinforcement. Uh, but he could put the animals in any contraption and they would, they would automatically get it because he understood how they learned and put together information. And you're absolutely right. We bring these animals into the human world. You know, we don't go out to join them. And it's so true. it's our moral obligation as higher consciousness beings to be stewards of these animals uh, to ensure that that they're fulfilled just as much as we are and um, it's what I've traded my life to do and so many other people that I've spoken to including yourself that um, that's what we do we become advocates and I tell people I'm kind of like an attorney for the dog yeah. I represent yeah. the animal you know you could tell Literally. me anything you want but but you know in the, at the end of the day the animal is who I'm looking for and to help you communicate better with this this animal but also to help you understand but in order to do that I need to understand the dynamic that is going on and the pattern that uh, we can see in front of us. And a lot of times the dog misbehaving is a symptom of an overall bigger problem. And if we can get to the root of that, instead of striking at the yeah. lead, then we can really, really make change and uh, that last generations, you know, we could change family trees and, and Absolutely. that's wonderful. I, wonderful just had a, I just had a lesson with a, a Frenchie <laughs> yesterday. Mondays are my Frenchie day. Okay. I've got a Frenchie <laughs> named Piper. I've got a Frenchie named Piper that I meet with at 10 o'clock. And then I have a Frenchie named Leo that I meet with at three o'clock. And I was having this conversation with um, Leo's owner yesterday. She, I think she's more, uh, most owners, when you first go into the door and you've, the, I think we're on our, we're on lesson two. So we're just barely into training and she's still overwhelmed with everything that she has to do. Not only, not only with the dog, but she, you know, all of her other household responsibilities. Okay. Yeah. And it's my job as her trainer to be, yes, be Leo's advocate, but also be her advocate. How can I help her deal with the stresses of her day mm -hmm. by giving her something to do with her dog to take away some of the stresses that she's dealing with. So how I structure my program is I literally give the client one, maybe two things to work on throughout the week. And that's it. If I give them any more or if, if training is going to take like an hour out of their day, they guess what? They won't do it. Yeah. It's just human nature. So I have to be her advocate and say, look, I just want you to spend two minutes here, five minutes here, 10 minutes here. If you've got it, you know, throughout the day, totaling up to maybe half an hour to an hour of training. Okay. But yeah. I have to give her the validation that, yeah, your plate is full. How can I help you alleviate that? And well, yeah, go ahead. I think that it helps that your plate's full too, Sarah. 
you know, <laughs> yeah. about what I mean, and 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 and, I, and eighty-five percent of my clients sometimes are women, and yeah. they're they're running this household, and sometimes they're like, dude, I did not get to do the things that you told me to do, and I'm just like, don't worry about it, you know. Ninety percent of all of the people that call me are women. Mm. Pay attention to that, folks. I mean, especially if you're a dog professional, and I had to go yeah. to a business coach and learn this and learn about the psychographics of, of women and what appeals to them. And so, um, you know, and that's that's it. Is it, And why do you think that is, Sarah? Why do you think that the majority... Um, uh, that's a good question. Well, first off, look at where I live. <laughs> I'm in Utah, okay? Huge christian slash mormon relations here okay obviously i am mormon i am a member of the church of jesus christ of latter-day saints now that we've been told by our prophet to say the real name and not mormon <laughs> anyway i had to throw that in there um i think the majority of it is because yes i live in the demographic that i do but also because in our culture women are the stay-at-home mom are the stay-at-home parent right? That's not my case though. Okay. I'll get to that in just a second. Um, women are traditionally the stay at home parent. They are the nurturers. They are the lovers. They are the ones that provide all of the, unfortunately, I think even a, it's not just here in Utah, but I think it's worldwide. The majority, of the, the, time, the, majority of the responsibilities of caring for the animal is actually delegated to the mom because that is the woman or the mom's innate nature nurture right mm -hmm. the husband will probably do it or the boyfriend or or you know if it's a single guy he'll probably do it just out of obligation right yeah, well, they're enforcers like i've had people you know don't make me call uncle billy <laughs> no, or don't, you know and i'm like what's going on <laughs> you know, that's it exactly. well, and same thing with those dogs i mean just our, to our vocal tonation being low as what as a male and yours being exactly. higher pitched you know same same type of thing so um, yep. yep, I agree fully, you know, and not only that, but I think that uh, because women, um, you know, a, a lot of times are compassionate, intuitive, uh, empathetic, um, mm -hmm. nurturing, just like you said, uh, a lot of times the dog can look at those characteristics as a sucker, you know, where they, as far as being yes. nurtured, you know, that's, that's one aspect of it, but that's just a small aspect of a dog's life. They need um, structure and uh, boundaries and and mm -hmm. sometimes they can look at that uh woman as a little bit more of a pushover um I, I as far as my observation that, that really is a lot of what i see is the woman is the one that takes care of the dog but then it's the husband that the dog listens to <laughs> yeah. and part of it is obviously gender i mean dogs are they listen better to a male voice. It's just your deeper voice, you're, you're stronger, there's testosterone, there's all sorts of things at play. However, if the female can learn how to tap into her... Mama bear, I call it. Mama, mama bear, yeah, but like her instincts, like tap mm. into that, that natural side of you. Don't like there was an interesting, we're going to get onto another like way tangent here. There was an interesting, um, oh gosh, who put it out? It was a YouTube video commercial of, I, I think it was a tampon video, <laughs> but <laughs> basically it was, I know I'm going to get really weird. Um, I can't remember what the company was. Maybe somebody out there can remember or saw the same video that I did, but basically they they did a, a social experiment with a group of teenage girls who were entering into their period time. Mm -hmm. And they said, okay, run like a girl, swing a bat like a girl, um, you know, scream or, or uh, different, different activities, do these things like a girl. They showed all of them performing in a way that they have been um, conditioned to do like a girl. 
Okay. Then after they showed that, they said, okay, now run as if you're you. Swing a bat as if you're you. Throw a ball as if you're you. And these girls completely ran their hearts out, swung the bat and hit the ball. They threw the ball. They, you know, this was not like a girl stuff. So I think as a culture, women. I found it here. Did you find it? Yeah. Let's watch it. Run like a girl. Even the boy. So they've got boys doing it too. And run like a girl. Uh huh. Now throw like, like, like a girl. Throw like a girl. Uh huh. Aww. <laughs> My name is Dakota, and I'm ten years old. Show me what it looks like to run like a girl. Well, they're young, and they don't know, throw so like they're. Like a girl. Oh yeah, they're. they're like a girl. They're giving it at all. What does it mean? Yeah. To you? Say run like a girl. I mean, run as fast as you can. Oh, what a sweetie. So, yeah, why does it become an insult? No. Mm. Like, yeah, insult the girls, but not my sister. Wow. It's like oh, girl. other girls, but not my sister. I don't know what it really is. It's a bad thing or a good thing. It sounds like a bad thing. It sounds like you're trying to humiliate someone. Mm hmm. So when they're in that vulnerable time between 10 and 12, how do you think it affects them when somebody uses like a girl as an insult? I think it definitely drops their self-confidence and um, really puts them down because during that time, they're already trying to figure themselves out. And when somebody says you hit like a girl, it's like, well, what does that mean? Because they think they're a strong person. It's kind of like telling them that they're weak and they're not as good as Mm. And it's what do you have to young girls who are told they run like a girl, kick like a girl, kick like a girl, swim like a girl? So watch, watch yeah. these older girls now run Somebody like, like, like a girl. Like a girl. Or kicking like a girl or shooting like a girl is something that you shouldn't is be doing. like a girl? Mm -hmm. You're still getting to the ball on time right. and you're still being first. You're doing it right. It doesn't matter what they say. I mean... Yes, I kick like a girl, and I swim like a girl, and I walk like a girl, and I wake up in the morning like a girl because I am a girl. Yeah, and that's not something that be I Be proud do. of it. Exactly. That's what they should do. If I asked you to, to run like a girl now, would you do it differently? I would run like myself. Would you like a chance to redo it? Boom. Boom. Mic drop. Yep. Well, and so, it's, it's interesting that that is, and especially like with, run, like, uh, with race. you know, w that especially with, with men and uh, being sissies and being, you know, don't be a girl, you know, it's, it's very dismissive and it's, uh, and it also, you know, shuts down that emotional uh, outlet uh, that mm -hmm. men express themselves just as much as exactly. any human would. And that's why we have, these emotions is because yeah. sometimes you're going to be upset yeah. and sometimes, you know, it's things are not always going to be fun and, and sweet and fulfilling. Um, mm -hmm. But it's, it's important to remember that, that, that some of these are, are, are kind of um, programmed. So now mm -hmm. it's, it's my job, like you said, to be the dog's advocate, but it's also my job to be my client's advocate. And, because 90% of the people that call me are women. Um, most of the majority are women that I can tap into and share my own experience with them. And I tell them, one of the first questions I always ask my clients is, what do you do professionally? Oh, right. I'm just a stay at home mom. No, you are not just a stay at home mom. Mm. You are a chaperone. You're a personal chef. <laughs> you are a uh, a nanny. <laughs> you are a child caregiver. You are a um, sometimes you're a nurse. You're the first line of defense to your baby's you're, you know, you're, emergency. You're, yeah. you're everything. Mm -hmm. 
Very important. You're, you're an attorney. You're you're an advocate <laughs> between your kids, like you know, sibling rivalries here. You know, so I say, look at all of these things that you're doing. You're not just a stay-at-home mom, okay? And you know, and if if they had a profession before and they left it to go into the to be a stay-at-home mom, then I always say, okay, what did you do beforehand? Most of them here in Utah are going to be a nurse or they're going to be a uh, a school teacher. And so I say, okay, perfect. You're a school teacher. How in the world did you control a room of 30 kids? <laughs> right? I can control a room of 30 dogs. Don't give me a room of 30 kids. All right. <laughs> they would probably walk all over me. I said, I okay, now. I couldn't do it. I would, I would, <laughs> I would now tap into, tap into that energy how did you control those kids how did you not just control them in the sense of like haha now i have you under my thumb you know how yeah. did you get those kids Motivate to them. respect you to yeah. trust you to do what you asked of them how did you get them to see you as for who you are you're in, you as an individual and then i say tap into that now do that with your dog. You don't need me as your trainer anymore. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> that's it. I mean, and that's that's basically how simple it can be. Um, you know, it's, it's just finding that little ember, you know, of strength that that yeah. Can take, yeah, and 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 yeah. then transmute that into that relationship. And then I, um, and then I, you know, I, I want to celebrate. I want to. Uh, find out what they've learned and not just about their dog, but about themselves and, yeah. and how they can apply this to different aspects of their lives. Because I tell people, you know, the dogs are going to respond according to their environment. We switch it and we can see that dog, but it's you. And that's what I tell people, I, you know, whenever I hear people and, and what do you, what do you tell people when you hear that they're getting into dog training because they, they dislike people? I say, Oh, you're in the wrong business, baby. Sorry. <laughs> You're in the wrong business. If you want to just do dogs, become a groomer, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. you know, or or a doggy daycare, like kennel worker, you know, yeah, or kennel worker, or something like that. Somebody that's behind the scenes. Because if you want to become a trainer, if if you want to be to be a trainer and you think that you're not going to work with people, you're in the wrong business. Sorry, like that's that's not it. Yeah, look at that. This is awesome. So stay-at-home moms work the equivalent of 2.5 full-time jobs. And this is uh, from BigThink.com. Yeah. Uh, just Google that. And this is something that you could also, you know, let let your clients know, look, we, we understand. And, I, and I, tell them, I have no clue what what your <laughs> what your day looks like. And I have friends that have lots of kids. And I'm just, in, I mean, I'm in awe. Of the stuff right. that they can do before six a.m. or nine, you know, sawing logs. <laughs> right, right. And that's you know, it's it's important to understand that as as uh, that dog professional. And and just like I was saying earlier, the dog is a, just a symptom, a lot of times of an overall bigger uh, dilemma that's going on in the house. And and we can introduce different tools and structure. Uh, but I think you're right. You know, keeping it simple Keep is. It Keep it simple, stupid. Kiss, right? The, yeah, yes. open, right? And Keep that's that's important. And I tell people with the dog training too. You know, slow is fast. It's less true. Is more and um, very true. One small you know, step. I've, since I'm going to put a shout out to Larry Crone. Since following him, I have made a huge drastic change to how I teach and how I how, how I teach the client and how I structure the program. Um, I really love how he broke down for us a few week, a few months ago, how he structures his programs. One week, you know, the first two weeks are back to back. Then the third week is two weeks out, fourth week is three weeks out, and, and then building up from there. So if you have a program, even if it's a four week program or whatever, then you're scheduling out your your sessions with your client further out and out and out. That way, they're seeing more long term results. Mm. 
you know, if we do the training back to back, yeah, my clients are successful. However, inevitably, every single time, about five to six months later, Sarah, this problem happened. Okay, great. I'll come and do a follow-up lesson. I don't really care. But I think it's going to be more beneficial to the dog and also to the client if they have time in between those sessions to break it up. Um, I was going to mention as as a stay-at-home mom, I am one. I can definitely empathize, but I also want to give power to all of you stay-at-home parents, regardless if you're a mom or a dad. Because guess what? My husband is actually the stay-at-home parent more than I am. My husband quit his job almost two years ago now. Um, and he's now the full-time stay-at-home parent. I do leave the house. I have usually three to four sessions with clients throughout the day. Um and when I'm gone, when I have a session, he's always home. That was our, when, when we started this business in 2014, we said, we want something that regardless of what happens, one of us is always home. Because I do not want somebody else raising my kids. Nobody I don't want to have to, you know, sometimes that has to happen. Sometimes what? you have to have a daycare or have a nanny or something like that. Let's but... I tell yeah, people nobody loves those kids like family, man. Nobody yeah. loves those kids. You know, whenever we had problems in the family, we would always take care of it within the family because that's exactly yeah. it. Being yeah. it just a stranger, I mean, they might love those kids, but I just I'm a true believer in that. So I, absolutely. I, well, and I and I agree too. Like all of all of our teachers growing up, and and even now, our teachers love our kids, but there's something special about the family nucleus, all right? And so Eric and I have always stressed, regardless of what's going on, one of us has to be home. And if not, then we call grandma, <laughs> all right? We don't call Joe Schmo down the street <laughs> and say, hey, can you watch the kids? Um, no, we want somebody that's within the family um, to take care of them. And um, anyway, to empower the parents, out there. Maybe some of you are like us who run a business together as a family. The most important thing that I can convey to everybody is make sure you honor that family time. Mm. You know, and I, I'm still struggling with it. It's not perfect, but you have to honor the time with your family. Don't let the business run away with it. OK, um, I have to set alarms for myself. I have to <laughs> I have to schedule and I share my schedule with everybody in my family. I have a, a huge dry erase board in our kitchen and I write down the schedule for the week and I say, here's my schedule. If you want to spend time with mommy, here's where we do it, you know, or if you want to do you want to go to the zoo on Saturday. OK, great. Let's let's do that. I'll I'll block off that time. I'm not going to answer my phone. I'm not going to answer emails. I'm not going to schedule a, a last minute session. You know, sorry. You know, even if a client calls or a potential client is like the only time I can meet is Saturdays at nine o'clock. Sorry, on somebody else. my weekends are off. I do not work on weekends. Wow. Um, I don't do Saturday or Sunday. Saturday is family wow. day. Sunday is religious practice day. Okay. Um, so Saturday, the only time I ever do anything kind of business related is I do have a group class once a month that we do. Um, I kind of structure it like Ted, um, where they have to complete training first and then they get to come into group class. Okay. Um, kind of like a drop in training, like a little, little refresher. Yeah. Yeah, it's a little refreshers. We do lots of field trips. We go to we go to fun places like Barnes and Noble and Home Depot and stuff. Cool. P.S. Barnes and Noble, Barnes and Noble is dog friendly. Barnes and Noble dog friendly. Everybody, go, 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 go. <laughs> I'll see you there. Barnes and Noble is awesome, by the way. Um, I did call and talk to the manager. Obviously, before any business establishment that I go into, I always call and ask just to make sure. 
even Home Depot. I know most of them are, are pet friendly, but a lot of them have had bad experiences with dogs. And so they yeah. don't like it. But I do call ahead all the time and call and talk to the regional manager as well as the store manager. So anyway, P.S. Yeah. Barnes and Noble is awesome. If your dog's an idiot, don't take them out in public. Get them training. That's what we're here for. You know, and that's not why I do the private lessons before group class. <laughs> yeah. We don't just throw them into the fire and into overwhelm. And, um, you know, they're not just magically going to get it. And especially right. take them into a confined area with a bunch of contraptions that are going all around them. A bunch of different people. A lot of them are very interested in this dog that is uh, freaked out. And it could be a recipe for disaster. And so, exactly. Um, exactly. Don't be you know, dumb. Don't be dumb. Yeah, don't be, don't be dumb. <laughs> be wise. So we have uh, people from Holland, uh, Snohomish, Washington, Florida. Cool. Um, Terry, your mom was talking about. She has the Chicken Camp DVDs. We were talking about uh, Bob Bailey. Um, Kenneth, good, good. Happy to have you here too, buddy. Um, this is so true. I used to work in a classroom, and it really is the same energy. That's what uh -huh. we're talking about. tapping into that that assertiveness of of how did you control this classroom if we're working exactly. with a client that um, is as a teacher you know and, and is having troubles with the relationship with their animal uh, we we ask them how did you control that large group of kids mm -hmm. uh, Mark Connolly uh, what's up Mark I want to get to so you on here, buddy uh, we trained our local sheriff's personal Labrador he is feared by his deputies as a tough disciplinarian. Nobody crosses him with his dog. He was the polar opposite. It could not follow structure with his dog. You know, these guys are, I mean, with, with a lot of uh, my clients, <laughs> they have big lives. And, you know, I have a, a lady that's a mediator, like this huge corporate mediator that does hundreds of billions of dollars or, or a, a year of, of mediation between all these corporations. And, I mean, her dogs, I mean, she is, she is like, nobody would cross her. Nobody would even question her. Even her help is like, I'm like, can you call her and let her know? And they're like, um, oh, okay. <laughs> you know, and I'm just like, okay, don't worry about it. I'll come, you know, I could just tell that, that there's some hesitation because of, of the, 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 how powerful and intense this woman is. Yeah. But her dogs are emotional dumping ground, man. And they're, I mean, she, well, and I she, wonder, I wonder, you know, even from personal experience, you can only maintain that persona for so long, right? Yeah. You know, yeah, out in public, we have a different energy about ourselves. Mm -hmm. Me, believe it or not, I'm actually an introvert. I don't like big crowds. I don't like being the center of attention. Most I mean, people are flabbergasted when they see what I say there. that because... <laughs> I'm so flamboyant on camera, <laughs> but it's because I'm putting on a different persona. <laughs> you putting on that hat. On but... multiple personality disorder. Sorry, that was a bad joke. <laughs> but, you know, I'm just saying, like, I think with those people, like, Mark, what you just shared was with, with somebody like that who has to deal with that load of leadership, they literally have to put on this persona. And if they don't, all hell breaks loose, mm. right? So then when they get home, they let their guard down and they're like, I'm done. I got to shed that, you know, that persona. That and they, they act differently. The, the they wife will remind them really quick. Hey, you know, I'm not one of your deputies, dude. <laughs> and the dog can see right through it. Absolutely. And the dogs would be like, yeah, whatever, dude. You know. <laughs> Absolutely. The dog can see right through it. Um, this is another, I, I love sharing like studies and, and, and um, social experiments. Here's another one. Smart versus hardworking study. I think it was Harvard, but don't quote me on that. It's a, a study of children that were put into two oh, groups. I know all about this one. Yeah. I, uh, Have you ever heard this one? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, and let me, so I'm post, I'm a huge reader. And just so you guys know, I posted up Larry Crohn's, a link to Larry Crohn's book, Everything You Need to Know About E Collar right. Training. Um, yep. love, you, love you, Larry. Big shout out to my man, Larry Crohn. And then I also put a link up to, uh, the Kaizen Method, uh, One Small Step uh, is a, a wonderful book, how, how One Small Step Can Change Your Life. Mm -hmm. um, it's 
method, uh, essential guide to learning Kaizen, the art of making great and lasting change through small steps. The journey of 1,000 miles begins with one single step. Lao Tzu things and the Lao Tzu says in the Tao Te Ching, and uh, and that's important to remember. You know, we could drive across the country at night uh, and get get miles, hundreds and thousands of miles. Uh, with only seeing 10 feet in front of us based on our headlights. And so um, it's important to chunk things down into a manageable, uh, easy to grasp uh, methodology. And I think that's important why you say that, you know, I only give my clients a couple a couple things to do for that week. And, um, and then the one that we were just talking. So this is Nurture Shock is what it's called. So Nurture Shock. Okay, yeah, it's, good. A, it's a book. Um, and this is, uh, it's called Nurture Shock, New Thinking About Children. And I'm going to go ahead and put a link to this as well. And Perfect. one of the most uh, influential books about children ever published, Nurture Shock offers a revolutionary new perspective on children that upends a library's worth of conventional wisdom. With impeccable storytelling and razor sharp analysis, the authors demonstrate that many modern society strategies for nurturing children are in fact backfiring because the key twists in the science have been overlooked. Uh, nothing like a, par a parenting manual nurture shot gets to the core of how we grow, learn, and live. And what they did is they took these uh, two kids, okay, uh, two groups of kids. And in one group, they focused on telling the kids, you're so smart. Yep. And they, they would give them three puzzles. The first yep. puzzle was super easy. Second puzzle was medium, but it was, you know, the definitely, you know, not, not all these kids are going to get it. And the third puzzle was like Mensa level challenging where they, they, there's no way right. that's, that these kids are going to get it. So what happened was the first group that they said that you're smart to, um, because everybody's going to get the first puzzle. And that's that's the key. Once they once they solved this puzzle, the 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 um, the person I was testing went in and said to the child, "You're so smart." Yep. And then the other group, when they finished the puzzle, they went into the child and they said, "Wow, good job! Uh, I bet that was, you did. You worked really hard on that. That's fantastic. Good good going." Yes. Okay. And so when what happened? And this is where it gets really very interesting. And and uh, and. I'm going to put up a link before I forget to the book is that when the second puzzle came up, once the smart kids were challenged, they did not want to fall off this pedestal of being smart and exactly. show that they, that they, that they weren't that. Right. And so once they were challenged, 60% of these kids gave up immediately. Yep. Or okay. they started cheating. Yeah, or they started cheating. They looked for ways to 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 get this done quickly because they did not want to disappoint the person that thought they were quote unquote smart. They now had that, the, they had that persona, that yeah. that mantle to hold up that they were smart. Go ahead. I think ninety percent of the kids that fo that they focused on the effort, ninety mm -hmm. percent of kids, they they solved this puzzle. And they yeah. worked through it. And so the same thing that they did was the 40% of the kids that were smart that solved it, they said, oh, wow, you're so smart. Okay. And then the ones that uh, they focused on effort, they said, hey, that is that is uh, wonderful. You, that, I bet you really worked hard on this one. This was a lot more challenging than that first one. And they were like, yes, I did. So here's where it gets super interesting, too. So the third puzzle, the Mensa level puzzle, the kids that were focused on smart, and like every one of them, boom, dropped away. OK, and then uh, the ones that were focused on effort, I think 40 percent of them were still trying and they had to yeah. tell them to stop. Yep. And this, these kids were, were saying replies like this is my favorite one. Yeah. Like, I, you know, and they were driven and they were really, really into this and really motivated. And so it's about the challenge. It's about the journey, not about right. the destination. That's right. And, and, and that's all that we're doing as dog professionals is that we're in this journey. And just like Nelson Hodges says, we're beginning. We're always at the beginning always. level, no matter, because yeah. that's that's exactly what it is. It's working with the behavior. Everything is or not everything. But, you know, we're always working with different people and dogs yeah. and environments. And we have to have that open mind. Well, I think and, Cheryl mentioned it in your last interview. 
she um, said, the more I learn, the more I know I don't know. (laughs) So it's so true. Like when I first started, I thought I was like magic, like, yay, you know, flip my wand and the dog listens. No, there is no magic to this. This is hard work. This is no substitution for that. Lots of studying, lots of um, just spending time with the dog, you know, getting to know, getting to know. Yeah. It's not a one size fits all thing. And thank you so much for clarifying that. I thought it was some completely other. I, it was all hearsay to me. I had not heard about the actual book. So thank you. Oh, for you, sure. you bet. Look, that book is amazing. And they also yeah. talk about some other studies that they do. It is fascinating. And, and uh, I actually had custody of my sister's kids for a little while. And that's one of the first books that I read. And I really studied that because I wanted to do right for these children. I wanted to show them yeah. a different form of what's possible. Right. Um, and and that by itself, just focusing on the effort and not telling them they're smart. And, so, and I, I mean, I would tell, I would be like, oh my gosh, you're so smart. That's a great job, dude. You did I know. You know. It's funny. <laughs> Ever since I heard about this study, like we never stay smart in our household anymore. And when we, um, when people say, oh, you're so smart, Micah or Mackenzie, you're so smart. And we're like, oh, let's tell you about this. And we tell them about the smart versus hardworking. And they're like, wow, that's interesting. Well, and, there's, there's data yeah. that backs it up. There's, there's a pericle, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's very, I mean, and they name the studies, everything in this book. So it's, yeah. it's fascinating. Yeah. Hey, Hannah uh, has a question for you. Yeah, go for it. Hi, I just joined the conversation, so I apologize if you already covered this. How do how does Sarah manage to not work weekends? And that's that's a fantastic question. <laughs> what programs <laughs> do you have? Okay, perfect. This will be a great segue to head over to my website. Okay. <laughs> so Hannah, this is for you and for anybody else who wants to learn how I structure my programs. Um, basically. I, because I am a stay at home mom, I said, I have to protect that time. It is sacred to me. Okay. It is sacred to my family, my kids. Um, last year we put our seven-year-old into first grade, sixth grade. Sorry. No, no, no. My six-year-old into first grade. See, Mm -hmm. gotta think here for a minute. We put our six-year-old into first grade and she thrived. We loved the school that we were at and um, we love the teachers. The program that they had in in the school system was called Leader in Me. If you're a fan of Stephen R. Covey, you'll know what that is. The seven habits are built, integrated into the school program. It was awesome. All the kids learned the seven habits. They, um, They each had a job within the school, Um, you know, whether it was cleaning out the garbage cans or helping in the cafeteria or whatever, okay? But while my daughter was in school, I was at home. When she was at home after school, I was gone Mm. with clients. So we started to have problems with my six-year-old relationship problems, mommy issues. Okay. Um, she listened really well to my husband, but <laughs> go figure because he's home all yeah. the time. Right. Yeah, exactly. But it's the, I think it, it, our relationship suffered. And so I said, okay, that's enough. I need to figure something else out. So that's when we got into homeschooling and that's a whole nother topic. But, um, because of that relationship problem that we had had in the beginning, I said, okay, enough is enough. I need to schedule that time to be sacred with my kids. Okay. Um, so anyway, to answer your question, Hannah, what I do now is I do four sessions a day. I have a 10 o'clock time slot, one o'clock time slot, three o'clock time slot, and a six o'clock time slot. The, Six o'clock time slot is only available Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. Monday nights, for those of you who don't know, in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints slash Mormons, (laughs) 
Um, Monday night is our family home evening night. That means that regardless of what's going on, what's scheduled, sports, work, whatever, we say stop. For the next hour, we're just going to have family time. So Monday nights are specifically family time. We do something fun together as a family. And then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I have open for clients at 6 o'clock. I am done at 7. Done. Session over. I say goodbye to the client. I drive home. Done. Okay. When we get back, when I get back home, my phone is turned off. Either on airplane mode or I shut it all the way off. Okay. I have to protect that time. That is our time when we meet together. We do story time. We do get ready for bed. We know we say our family prayers. We sing our songs and send them to bed. Okay. And then it's time for my husband. He needs time too with me, not just the kids. Okay. So, um, then on Friday nights is usually me time. I get to go and do something fun, <laughs> either by myself or with my girlfriends. Um, and then on Saturdays, all day Saturday, except for that once a month is uh, once a month is group class, but all day Saturday is family time. We go and do something all day together. Like, this next Saturday, we're going to go in the morning, we're going to the pumpkin patch. We're going to go pick out our pumpkins and um, let the kids play in the corn and do all that whole fun thing. And then in the evening, we're going to drive up to Salt Lake and go to the Hogel Zoo to see the, um, they do a Halloween lights uh, motif at the Hogel Zoo. Cool. So that is our family day. Um, Sundays, like I said before, is religious day. I don't do anything other than religious stuff, you know, go to church, uh, write letters to family, call them, do family history, genealogy stuff, uh, family dinners, that kind of thing. Go visit neighbors, see how they're doing. Um, anyway, so that's how I structure my day. I don't know if that made any sense to you, Hannah, but basically just protect those times. What time of day do you want to take for yourself? And what time of day do you need to take for your family? And then block it off. Nope, I can't take any clients at that time. And if the client calls and says, this is the only time that I can meet with you, sorry, I already have a blocked off. I can't make an exception. Yep. And just say, these are the times I'm available. If you're not available at those, at those times, maybe I'm not the, the right trainer. Maybe they need somebody who can actually fit into their schedule and that's okay. I'm, I'm at the point now where I can say no. <laughs> I can, I've been saying no for a while now to clients, you know, be like, ah, I'm just not the trainer for you. Go find somebody else, you know? Um, if there's value in that word. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, and I tell people, no, K N O W. No. N O. Yes. Right. So exactly. no, no. Because by yeah. saying no, what you do is you're reclaiming your own power. Yeah. You're not allowing people to push you around. You you're saying what? no. If I have to say no to somebody that I can't fit into my schedule, a lot of them actually respect that. And they're like, you know, I'll see if I can actually fit in, into your schedule. And they're a little bit more uh, willing to actually work with me. Now, if I say no because they want me to train their dog to be a service dog, and I'm like, I'm not a service dog trainer. Don't call me for service dog stuff. Or don't call me for emotional support dogs who are going haywire and biting people. No, I will not train that dog. <laughs> yes. Take the label well, off, and then I'll train it. <laughs> <laughs> well, a lot of people, I think that they already have it figured out, and we're just there. Um, I don't know. I don't know. A lot of times, do you know what I'm saying? How they're like, okay, I just need problem or I just need help with this one thing. And I'm yeah. like, you, you got to understand that that's, that's because it's of this or thing. yeah. It's it, it, never just one thing. Yeah. And, and the other thing too, is I think that people a lot of times try to think with their emotions Yeah. in, yeah. in the dog world and I get it, but it's, it's, you know, not a, not a smart thing to do because it's not really possible. We use our brain to think and our emotions to feel and right. uh, we can't can't get those. Dogs, 
we can learn a lot from dogs in that regard that I've, I've said this a lot in the past and I, I kind of can see that I've been wrong in how I've been saying it, but I still think there's some truth to it. Humans are very emotional. We base a lot of our um, decisions on emotions. Mm. Dogs, dogs are not, are not emotional beings, beings, but they can but feel emotion. Okay. They can feel it. They can understand it to some certain extent. Human emotion. They understand their their type of their style of emotion, but they do not understand ours. We have to have a little bit of training, a little bit of existence with each other before the dog learns what our emotions mean. Um, that's why PTSD dogs are so awesome. However, that's also why Fifi <laughs> shouldn't be your emotional support dog. <laughs> okay. Um, it takes a certain amount of of uh understanding on the dog's part of human emotion for them to fulfill that role. But again, dogs base their decision on instinct and learned behavior. We base our decisions primarily on emotion. And I think if we learned how to base our decisions like dogs, we'd actually be wiser in our decisions, not be so like, don't be an old impulse buyer, right? <laughs> you know, hey, uh-uh. Hear little little ears flopping and little nails clicking. Um, They're wrestling on the floor. <laughs> off. My girl's back here. I got her. Is she always. back? She got she's right. she got her breakfast. Yeah, she's she's full and content and all that stuff. So, um, oh, Hannah, a, a clarification Thank for you. Hannah. Um, yeah, I was going to clarify as well. I only do privates. I don't do board and train anymore. Um, okay. That, for for me, that, that was just for me, our decision, I found it to be more healthy for our lifestyle to not do board and train. I'm, that leaning, that. I'm, leaning, I'm leaning that way to, to, yeah. to curb that kind of stuff, you know. It, it doesn't mean that board and trains are bad. It doesn't mean that private lessons are good or, or the best, you know, you do you. All right. If you have to do board and train because of, um, you live out further away or something like that, it's just unrealistic for people to get to you or unrealistic for you to get to people, depending on how, where you live in, in a city and stuff like that. Location matters. Um, timing matters. And it depends on what you enjoy more. Do you enjoy more uh, being a homebody and working with the dog and yes, working with the owner that it's, it's guaranteed. If you're going to be a trainer, you have to work with people. Um, <laughs> even Primarily. I, would say, <laughs> I would say actually for a board and train type of a program, you have to be even better as a teacher. You better believe than it. Somebody who works in like a group class or a private lesson because in the board and train, you only have that drop-off lesson, right? Yep. Well, you and you're paying a lot more money and a lot more expectations. You have to follow-up lessons to, to convey all the stuff that you did in the board and train, right? So you have to be super good at being a teacher. Now, we switch to privates because I don't mind driving. Now, could I have people come to my house? Yeah, I could. But then again, it's encroaching into my family life. Yeah, in your sanctuary, your house, in your sanctuary. Yeah. I want, I want my home back. I want clients to. Uh, I also want clients to be successful. I find that training done at a facility or training done at somebody else's house is not quite as good as training in your house with your dog and your problem. Yep. In your environment. Well, I was um, talking to Tyler and he, Tyler Muto at the ICP conference, and he started to do something very similar where he's doing board and trains, but he's sending the dogs home on the weekend. Yeah, that's a new thing that I've started seeing, or day training is becoming very popular. Um, I know some trainers have been doing it for a really long time. Um, I know that M. Scott Borden, he does it. Scott, he does day training. He's been doing it for a few years. Um, but day training is a wonderful option if 
if say it's easier for you to train at your place, I'm overwhelmed. Yeah. Okay. I'm overwhelmed when yeah. I have a board and train and all of our kids here. Uh -huh. I mean, that's yeah. energetic residue. That's what people need to realize is that, you know, one, when, when people ask for discounts, I'm like, no, because this is 24 yeah. seven, man. You know, when I have yeah. your dog, like this is like, when I'm out at a training session, I still have your dog right here in my brain. And it's exactly. energetic residue that yeah. is taken away from this focus that I have. And it just is that way. And that's, that's just how we think. And so yeah. if you have kids and those kids, I tell people, you know, whenever we have a decision between a dog and a kid, you gotta be very thankful for easy decisions in life. Kids number one. <laughs> 100%. Actually, spouse, spouse is number one. There you go. Five dogs, five kids. If My you, goodness, Nicole. Yeah. See, Nicole, you God understand. Bless you. So <laughs> with, with the spouse, if you don't have your partner, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, whoever is in your life as your soulmate, your, your support, if you do not take care of them, the rest right. of it is going to go to pot, the kids included. Take well, care of number one, then take care of the kids then take care of the dogs. Okay. That's, that's always been our rule. The dogs, I'm sorry. I love them to death, but my kids come to, they're, they're coming up better than that. I mean, that's and, what I board and train, Yeah. A board and train just wasn't working for us. It was grading on our, you know, the dog is with us 24 seven, you know, sometimes three, four, five weeks, you know, depending on which program they chose. And so we slowly switch to privates and I only do that. And, and here's how you, this is my sales pitch. When somebody calls and they say, they say they want to board and train. I say, that's fine. What's your life, lifestyle like? Are you needing a board and train? Um, if you need a board and train, then I can send you to Heather Beck. <laughs> Go off to k Life Lifelight, okay? <laughs> You know, she's an hour away. It's easy drop off. Go do it. She'll yeah. get your dog trained. If you want private sessions, though, I'm happy to do that. And so here's my sales pitch. Where do the problems happen? Hmm. Who does the dog live with? I am not a dog trainer. I am a human coach. Okay. My job when you hire me is to basically clone myself and put it into you. All right. My job is to teach you the dog owner how to train your own dog because I'm not going to be around forever. Nor do I want to be, <laughs> nor do I want to be, you know, and I tell them that and they, they laugh and they're like, <laughs> and, and say, at the end of training, like our second to last, or maybe the last session, I say, I never want to see you again. <laughs> just kidding just kidding I, I, you know i love having a continuing relationship and i always tell my clients you guys are not my clients you're my friends yeah. if anything happens anything comes up after training my prices are set at such a rate that i can feel comfortable coming back and, and continuing training if we need to all right no i don't price per hour um that's something that i got from duke ferguson is don't price per hour. Ted does the same thing. Price, set your prices, set your rates at what you're comfortable with if you needed to take off work, okay? And you had to live on that. Um, yes, let's see. Um, with, with the private sessions, I, I schedule them out like, I don't know, Hannah, if you heard this before, since you're, you caught on a little bit later, but I set, I set my sessions so that my clients have enough time to schedule out in between sessions. First two sessions are back to back a week apart. Okay. So Monday's at 10, right. Or Wednesday's at three, something like that. And then we each successive week gets another week in between or two weeks or three weeks. The furthest I go out is four sessions, okay, or four weeks, sorry, in between sessions. I do a four-week program, a seven-week program, and an eight-week program. Eight weeks is more like eight to ten if needed, <laughs> um, but again, they're 
paying $2,600 for that one. I know my prices are really low, just so you know. <laughs> Well, I mean, it, 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 I mean, it was what people pay. And not only that, but I, I also, I want to lower my prices and like my group classes and stuff. I want uh -huh. to access as many people as possible. Get as many people as you can, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but there's also there's also that pain point, you know, where I want people to yes. work. I want them to realize that this has value that they, I, and, and that's where, you know, if you give stuff away for free, that's what exactly it's worth a lot of times for, for people. Yes. And unless it's a gift, you know, then then that's something different, you know. And um, Anne says, Anne Green says, I'm starting to do, I'm starting day training as well. But many folks do like their dogs trained while they're away on vacation. Yeah. Work that includes weekend. I'm trying to find a better work life balance. And yeah, uh, Nicole, that's a really good, really tough one. Um, and I love you, girl. I miss you. And, and also asks if you're using remotes in your sessions. Yes. Yes, at a certain me. point, not right off the bat. Yeah, um, yeah. Well, I mean, to know the with, correct answer first. Right. With, um, and with your situation, I know you live in, on the East Coast in, in, in like vacation area, right? So a lot of people are going to send their dogs away to that kind of a situation. Yeah. I would just say, I would just use this argument, like I said before. Who lives with the dog? Who lives with the dog? Who is going to be the trainer after I'm gone? You know, a three, four, five week board and train. Sure, we'll get you the perfect dog for a few months, maybe a year or two years. But ultimately, it's up to you, the dog owner, to maintain that going. Um, and I just tell people the same thing. Like, I think most of my clients understand why I don't do board and train anymore because I tell them it's tough. Mm. Board and train is tough on the family. If you're single or if you are, if you run your business with your significant other, um, go for it. Yes. Yeah, if, if you're able to find a work life balance that works for the two of you and you both are working and training dogs and, and it's awesome the way that you're, you have it set up, but you're still taking time to be together. Like, dogs separated, then um, go for it. I think it's great. But if you have a big family, like Nicole was saying, five kids, five dogs, like it's hard. That's 30 legs. That is 30 <laughs> legs, girl. Holy cow. <laughs> yes. 15 pairs of eyes. Oh, wait, no, that's 35 <laughs> legs, right? Five dogs. No, that'd be 20. No, 30 legs. I was right the first time. Okay. Oh, man. Any new legs? I don't do math. Come on, Bill. You know this. No, <laughs> but you can correct <laughs> it if I wrote it down. I understand I you don't charge for an hour, but average, how long in a session usually? How long my sessions? I keep them to an hour. Go figure. I, I keep them to an hour. Um, so, okay, let me, let me tell you how I came up with my prices. Uh... Oh, uh-oh. I think she popped off here. Let's see if she's back. There she is. <laughs> I don't know what happened. Here uh, it comes. I, had, I, I have an iMac mouse and I think I swiped. <laughs> swiped over, swiped back, but you're back. Sorry, guys. Sorry. Yep. Okay, let me pull up my price sheet here. Is it on your website? Um, my prices are on my website, but how I have it broken down is actually on a Google Keep. Do you know what? I have really Google quick. Keep. Let me show. Let me show people. So. Um, whenever we watch movies, a lot of times movies are what we call allegories, or there's another story within that movie uh, ah. to pay attention to. And, and here we have The Matrix, and I want yeah. you guys to pay attention to uh, when when these these agents are chasing him around, and then he has a realization that all I need to do is say this one word to stop. Ready? No. And by saying no, he takes control. Exactly. Okay. So the no, and he'll say, here, I'll say it right here. No. You can't really hear it too well, but that's it. That's what he says right there at the beginning is no. 
And so it's very important, I think, you know, to watch these allegories and to, to look at the- No people. is a very powerful word. I think the no is the most powerful word. I think, and, and I, I share this with my clients, I'm sure all everybody does as a dog trainer, you, you do have to say no occasionally to the dog. Mm -hmm. And it's how you say it, the intention behind it, because some of my clients are like, no. What does that sound like? There's a question mark at the end of that sentence, <laughs> right? How about no or no? <laughs> No, it doesn't always stop it. No. No, no, it sounds like a bark. I'm like, you're, yeah, barking. you're barking at the dog. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, this is something that I learned. I went and shadowed um, Courtney and Josh Donahue. Oh, cool. Uh, oh, my gosh. A year and a half ago? Wow. Oh, yeah. It's been that long. Okay, anyway. Time flies um, when you're fun. I shadowed Josh and this is one thing that I took away from being in his sessions with his clients was he always brought up punctuation. He always said, yeah, as, as the client is working, the dog has the client has the leash and he's instructing the client how to do, you know, certain, like say for instance, we're doing the sit command, you know, something simple. The client would take the leash and have the dog sit and the client would say, okay, sit. Come on, buddy. You want to sit? You want to sit? <laughs> and Josh would always say, you're putting a question mark at the end of that sentence. You're giving the dog leeway to decide if he wants to sit or not. <laughs> okay, how about you try this? Sit. And the client would go, sit. No, 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 no. It's not sit. Because you, you just put an exclamation point at the end of that sentence, okay? Try a period. Make it a statement sit and the dog goes oh okay <laughs> then he can reward it and say yeah good boy here's your treat you know so um yeah all right pricing this was for um Malcolm Russell this is my pricing um around 150 per lesson that's just regardless I don't care how long the lesson is per hour or whatever but it's around 150 per lesson. I'm just pricing it based on what information am I sharing? How valuable is the information that I'm sharing? Are they getting the results? And are they, um, uh, anyway, I'll get to that one. I don't, it, it went in a way, in a way. And then um, <laughs> I charge, this is something new that I added was a rush hour fee <laughs> if you know what I'm talking about <laughs> if I'm gonna be so my I told you my my four times 10 three sorry 10 one and three and six okay right. these two sessions are at a different price set than these two sessions makes sense okay these two sessions have a rush hour fee attached to them how much is the, the prices that are on my website so this is how i give my clients so bill you mentioned no discounts i don't do discounts except for this one thing if the client chooses a 10 o'clock time or a one o'clock time i give them the matinee discount because that's the time of day that I want to work. I don't want to work the 3 p.m. or the 6 p.m. This might be helpful for Hannah too. If, or Anne, Anne as well, Anne and Hannah, if you guys have to have clients come when they want to come, that's fine. Charge extra. Just say this is an inconvenient time for me, so it's going to cost you a little bit more. If the client wants to cost more, great. Take them on. But if they want to save money, they have to get into within your schedule. Mark says that he charges an after hours fee. Yeah. Yeah. Man, exactly. you, you guys, I mean, this is great. I mean, I'm 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 doing it today. <laughs> <laughs> today, starting now, after hours fees, rush hour fees. Rush hour fee, after hours fee. Your dog is it your dog is 
bit me feed. Up. This is the email that I send to clients. Uh, let's see here. Stella, Stella says hey. She's Hi, Stella. Okay, this is what I email to my clients. As a bonus for choosing, see it's a bonus, right? As a bonus for choosing the AM session or the early afternoon session, you can you can cut it the email how you want it. You qualify for a two hundred dollar discount or whatever you want it to be. You know, I actually have it set to fifty dollars extra per lesson. So my two hundred or sorry, my four program, my four week program is fifty per lesson for rush hour. Okay, my seven lesson program would be what three fifty? Come on, Bill, is that right? Seven, seven times fifty is three fifty. Yes. Okay, good. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you passed. Okay. <laughs> okay, so then I say, you know, here's the two hundred dollar discount. Your total will be this much, and that includes the cost of training equipment. I don't charge extra for equipment and stuff like that. Um, all of my programs include the cost of the remote collar, the prong collar, the, um, I, I do cots now. I'll send a, I'll send a cot with them as well. Pet cots. I use K and H. A and H. A and pet H. Cots. Mm -hmm. Do you include, so do you have the equipment charge separate or is it already figured in? It's already figured in. Equipment is all figured in. Um, and I, I don't really charge extra for it. I just put it as cost. I don't know. Like I buy it wholesale, obviously. Well, I mean, it's it's tools that are going to help improve the relationship with that. You know, and if we're and if we're trying to to make our money with the products, then yeah, I might as well open a store, dude. I don't I don't know. Like that's what I feel too. Is like if I, uh, you know, my husband keeps pushing that. He said, just do a store. I'm like, I don't want to. Because then I have to do sales tax. <laughs> we started on that. I have to file quarterly. Yeah, totally. <laughs> well, that's why I like my wife and I, you know, no employees, no nothing, man. Elle and I, I had a bunch of employees and man, it was a headache. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't believe how much I'm paying. I know. Employees and not only that, but it, I became, I was like, I don't even work with dogs anymore. <laughs> I feel like, I feel like I'm managing people. Hey, Siobhan. Siobhan Winter just joined Hey, us. girl. Haven't seen you around in a long time. What's up? Hope you're doing good. Um, yeah. So uh, Anne says that she has clients who travel two hours uh, plus, and uh, she has a lot from the yeah. island of Nantucket. Yeah. So I see me doing a half hour board and train, and, or half, half board half, train, half day half train. Half, that's right. I finally decided to hire help, though. Good. 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 Well, I know that, Anne, you've had a rough last year. Don't do it before. It sucks. So don't do it. Okay. Thank you. Now, Thanks, now Mark. Mark, Mark, is this a brick and mortar store or is this a online, online store? Because my husband is definitely pushing for the online store. Well, it's, it's the same, man. I mean, the brick and mortar, I, then an on, I mean, it's just basically storing and, and uh, yeah. Yeah. Got a shot, best and scariest decision. Oh, awesome. wow, awesome. Nothing ventured, nothing gained, sweetie. You got this. You, you're, you're talented with those dogs. And, uh, yep. And, uh, okay, yeah. no, uh, sorry, I never finished the pricing structure. Nalcom, this is, or back to Nalcom here. This is for you, buddy. Um, so the 150 per lesson plus the rush hour fee. Um, I do charge or the, again, this is the cost all included, 75 for tools. 75 includes the cost of the prong collar, the leash, the, um, the cot, um, and anything else that they might need as far as like small equipment. Um, the e-collar is separate. I, mean, I charge 170 for e-collar um, and I just put that all into the price. So if you do 150 per lesson with a 300, rush hour fee with 75 for tools and 170 for e-collar, it roughly comes out to 1400 or so. So that's my price for my six sessions for the adult basic program. I love it. Okay. That's the uh, rush hour one. Yep, that's, that's the rush hour one. So that's the price on my website, okay? On the website, I do the rush hour 
So that way, when a client calls and they say that they can meet at the 10 o'clock time or the one o'clock time, I can actually gift them back the discount. Sorry for all the clients that might be watching. <laughs> there you go. Whatever. I mean, you do good work. And, uh, you know, and same thing, like if, if somebody, if, if you need it, if you if you're struggling or whatever, let me know, man. You know, and I'm, I'm happily. You know, I'm a little different where I, I don't mind people too much coming out here. I have, I have plenty of help that I need uh, yeah. here on the property, too. And and I'll do different rates. Like if, if I do, uh, I'll do 150 an hour uh, for assessment charge. But if you want to come here, too, I'll do it 100 an hour, you know, and yeah. so I don't have to do anything. Yeah. I can do, I've but... done that before, too, where if they want to come and meet me, I had a lady. I had a lady with a little teeny tiny chihuahua. Um she contacted me for training. Yeah, you're welcome, buddy. Um, she contacted me for training because she is building a tiny home in okay. an old school bus. And she's going to be traveling the country and living on BLM land and other places. And she wanted her little chihuahua to be awfully trained because she doesn't know where she's going to be. Um, yeah. And so because she wasn't living in any one particular area, any one home, I said, you know what, if you come to my house, it won't matter regardless of where you live, obviously, because you're going to be switching locations all the time. So she, we met here at my house to do training and we, we didn't ever work inside. We all, we worked outside the entire time. So I felt my sanctuary was still protected. We just yeah. met outside in the driveway. Or in the front yard, or in the backyard, down. if yeah. or the backyard if we needed a fenced in area, and we got that. I'll be darned. We got that little three pound chihuahua off leash trained, and she was off on her way. She's down in, uh, I think she's in North Carolina right now, and I still keep in touch with her. She she has an Instagram feed. I can't remember. I can't remember. I'll see if I can look it up. So I was going to sit, read this. Yes, store is at the entrance to our facility on Main Street, and he is currently at the counter and not training dogs. Not good. I yep, and that's it. That's exactly when I had all these employees, man. I'm like, I couldn't believe it. I, and then I'm like, oh my gosh, I got to go train dogs now. <laughs> you know, and yeah. it just like we were saying about that uh, energetic residue, same thing with structuring your business. And, and it's important to not just work in the business. You got to work on the business as well. And, um, yeah, and I got some guys that I'm going to be talking to as well to, to help with that, uh, that have helped me, uh, with my business and, and, um, but all great stuff, man. I love the rush hour fee. Um, I love the after hours fee that Mark calls it. Yeah. And, I'm going to have Mark on here as well. I saw him at uh, the IACP awesome. and he's a, he's a good family dude as well. And, and uh, you know, these yeah. are so much fun, man. And, and, oh, and let's put it, let's put a shout out. Um, is it Mark? Mark, are you the one that put together the uh, Facebook group for families, family dog trainers? Oh, cool. Let me hold on. Let me see if I can find it. Family dog trainers on Facebook. Well, <laughs> and so Sarah, as we're, uh, winding this down or uh, yeah. what's the best way for people to get a hold of you to get a hold of me go through my website it's awesome and then that's baker's acres canine baker's academy i'm gonna go ahead and canine .com. i'm gonna put it here um here and then i'm also gonna put it into the um the all comp. of my um all of my social media links should be on the website as well. My okay. telephone number, if you do want to call me, my telephone number is down at the bottom in the footnote or the footer of the website. Okay. Um, and, oh, for those who might be interested, I do have a shadow program. It's very okay. small, <laughs> but I do have a shadow program that basically just says it's a, a day in the life of, of, the bakers and how we run bakers acres and how like not only that but i will i will sit down with you and create a business plan um i go over all of the tricks of the trade that we do um here at, at bakers acres and then <laughs> i do but i also build websites too 
You do. I need to talk to you about that. Is that? Did you make your own website? I did. Okay. Yep. Good. I use just, just ask. Who, who a caveat. I use Squarespace. Okay, it still I, looks good. I've only had a little bit of experience with WordPress, so if you're set on a WordPress website, don't come to me. Go to Ted. Okay, Ted's really good. So I was collaborating something for busy families that want a better trained dog amongst the business of family stuff. I'm curious, not cooties, yeah. um, but no. But I'm curious about this Facebook group you mentioned. So the Facebook. I'm dog. pretty sure that. Okay, so a quick shout out to Victoria Warfel. She has yeah. her group called Professional Women Dog Trainers. Mm -hmm. um, and then, good glory, who is it that has the Professional Family Dog Trainers? Let's see. Family Dog. I'll we'll find out. Professional Dog Training Families. Maybe I'm typing in the wrong thing. It's a group. It's a group on Facebook. Professional it's dog. Facebook. I'm not pulling it up. If anybody knows what I'm talking about, where are my we'll groups at? We can put it in the comments down below. Yeah, I'll put it in the comments if we need to get going. But anyway, any last minute questions, guys? Or just call me. Yeah. Email. So just. I like what you were what you were saying when you asked the people about their board and trains. Where do the problems, uh, or wait, where do the problems come from, and who does the dog live with? Yep. Where do the problems? What do you say? That what's the first thing you said? I don't know what I wrote down here. What do you ask? Yeah. Who is? Where do the problems happen? Where do the problems happen? There we go. Yeah. If the problems happen outside the home, then honestly, it probably doesn't really matter where you train. Mm -hmm. If the problems happen inside the home or on the property, on the home's property, then guess where we should do training? Absolutely. Right where it happens. I had one, I had one client. The dog was perfect outside the home. As soon as you put the leash on, you took him for a walk. He was perfect. He loved kids. He would run around and play with them and be joyous and everything. As soon as you get, at, get onto their property or in their home, he was biting children. It's his territory now. Yeah. So I so that's the first question. Where do you have or where are the problems happening? Are they happening inside the home or outside the home? Uh, the second question is, well, I, I didn't mention this one before, but what's your time commitment? Hmm. If you that's travel, a, that's lot, important. If you travel a lot, then that's probably a private sessions are probably not going to work. Right. Or if your schedule is not is all over yeah. the place, you know, we can't or if really you work, schedule. If you work two jobs, you know, you just don't have the time. Then yeah, a board and train might be your best best option. Um if you um I forgot what the other question was, uh, but anyway. Pretend, well, that, uh, um, pretend, pretend that you're a client calling. Then I'll be Kenneth there. wants to know what's your opinion on quoting prices up front um, front as opposed to an in-home sales presentation. Oh, Ken, I know you, Ken sent me a really awesome video. Um, he Ken's has, in Vegas. Yes, Ken is an awesome, awesome guy. Um, really good pizza too. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, this is how I do my sales approach. My website is still kind of under the whole like T3 model. If you've been through Train the Trainers, which I did, um, you know that the website does all the work for you, kind of, right? So that's why my phone number is at the footer. However, my Google presence, and my telephone's right there. That's where I get most of my call. Well, most of my inquiries is either from Google or from word of mouth. Um, so most people just go to Google Maps and find my telephone number and call me. And I, I answer the phone. Um, I don't. Except you know, after seven. Except after seven. My phone's turned off. Exactly. I answer the phone if I'm not in a lesson. Okay, I'm not going to answer the phone if I'm in the presence of yeah. a client. Like, that's <laughs> like, just... One second. Hey, hold yeah. on. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's, that's really bad. Um, I... 
Somebody just woke up. Oh, she's so cute. She would totally get away with murder at my house. <laughs> she's too cute, I tell people. So. Isn't that the truth, though? We tell our yeah. clients, like, you know, don't let the dog sleep on the couch. Don't let the dog sleep on the bed. And then at home, we're totally like, yeah. whatever. You're like, get up here. Get up here and cuddle with me. You're no evil. <laughs> I know. Right? Well, thank you so much, Sarah. And Nicole says, uh, you know, I'm loving the structure you have for your business and your family life. And feel thank free you. to reach out if you guys have any quick questions. Uh, you don't have to go through the website. You can definitely go to my Facebook Messenger and just message me. Um, that's that's one thing that I always have. Um, I've always done, and this is not to build myself up, guys, but I'm just letting you all know. If you have a question, please just reach out. Like I, I tell my clients this too. It during their week of of practicing their homework assignment. Text me, call me, email me. If you have a question, you have a a, a concern, you have a, a success. For. That's what you know? I do, you know? Yeah, yeah. If you have something come up, don't feel like you can't reach out because you're, again, I'm not, I'm not charging for hour. You know, I'm not charging for time. Um, you know, I might not answer right away, but I'll get back to you as soon as I can. You know, you might call and leave a voicemail. Great. I'll return the voicemail, excuse me, or I'll send a text message back or, you know, whatever. If I might be with another client, I'm not going to answer the phone. But if I do have a free moment, I will sit down and, and call you back and and let you spill your beans, you know. So. Yeah. Well, I love what you said about like I'm I'm out of the picture, you know, and that's it. Is that's as as teachers, that's what we, our end goal is, is to mm -hmm. to get out of here. And um, yep. You know, and, and there's a lot that I've learned from our conversation today. And, and oh, good. Uh, I I'm glad I brought, you. brought some value to you guys. You know, yeah. Bill, when you contacted me, I was like, are you freaking serious? I almost peed my pants. I'm like, so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, thank you for husband, coming out of your comfort sh uh, zone and, and doing know, my this. My husband is like, my husband's like, Sweetheart, I've been trying to tell you, you're just as good as everybody else. I'm like, I am not nearly as good as everybody else. Like, seriously. Like, when you messaged me, and I'm like, Bill just had Larry Cole on. Like, and who am I? I'm just Sarah Baker from Utah. Baker's Acres. You know, we all have we all have pearls of wisdom, and we all have things to teach each other and learn oh. from each other. And we all have ways of presenting information. I've learned plenty from you today, Sarah. I I'm tell very... people that all the time, and it just doesn't, yeah. you know, I think we all have a hard... <laughs> yeah, it's hard to, you know, to... to you know, we're uh, all like, I want to... Same standards it. on ourselves, you know. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, well, I am well, thank you. flattered and honored to be a part of this awesome, awesome community. So thank well, you. You belong here. You absolutely belong here. And uh, thank you for, for your input, your observation, your time, and, and also just for, you know, showing that it's possible to take and reclaim, you know, yes. what's important to your life and not to allow this business to yeah. just run all over you and, so um, true. Don't and structure let it. Run your life. Oh. Really quick, I'm going to do some snapshots, people, and then we're going to hang up. Oh, it's backwards. The entrepreneur roller coaster. Here, I'll, I'll put a link here. So, yep. Entrepreneur Roller Coaster, I'll put a link on Amazon. Anything else that you recommend? I'm a big reader. I love it. I love this stuff. Entrepreneur. What was it? Entrepreneur what? Roller coaster. Roller coaster. That's right. Here, let me. I can't see. I'm doing the roller. Poster Darren Hardy, the man. All right, so it's a the entrepreneur roller coaster. Why now is the time to hashtag join the riot? Yep. Let me put this down in the comments here below. And thank you, everybody. And hold on one second, sir. I'll say goodbye to you on the on the other side here. So don't worry about hanging up and um, check out check out the book. Oh wait, what it takes to be number one. Let me get this one here. I would like these for myself. A shout out to uh, uh, Jeremy. Jeremy Majors? Yeah. The man. Lambeau Field. Is that, who, is that who told you about this book? Okay. Uh, quick shout out. If you're a dog trainer, 
You need this book. Yep, Thriving Dog Trainers. Where's okay. mine here? I've got it here somewhere. Where did I put it? Thriving Dog Trainers by my man, Ted Ephemitis. Whatever, I'll find it later. I have he all, called, three. Yeah, all three of them, and he's working <laughs> on his fourth one. You're very welcome, Anne. So, yeah, I'll put up a link for all Ted's books there. And um, and I can't yeah. stress this one enough. Let dogs be dogs. And Mark is going to come back on. We had some technical difficulties, and I need to reach back out to him. I know you already so. put the link onto that, so there's Larry's. Yep. Larry's e-collar training book. Yep. Uh, all, all great stuff, folks. So Awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. And oh, share, if you don't mind, hit the share button if you enjoyed our conversation. And if you have any questions for Sarah, feel free to reach out to her if you have any questions for me. And also, I have a paid group. I never plug my group. Yes, so please do. Plug it in there. Plug it in there. Yeah, this is a $20 a month group that I, that I have that I have set up. Um, where I am doing some more interviews on there with some people that not, aren't necessarily dog experts. Um, but yeah, BowWowBill.Live. Check me out there. $20 a month, $19.95 a month. And um, who is that? <laughs> this is my Chiweenie. This is Chico. Chico. Chico the Chiweenie. That's a good he looks, good. he looks like Dobby. He's gonna yes, be he Dobby does. He, need, he needs a sock. Give him a sock for a dobby. And that's our little Harry Potter reference we had yeah, to drop in. We got it. Woohoo! <laughs> Harry awesome. Potter, we mentioned. Done. <laughs> All right. Bye, everybody. Thanks, guys. See you later. See you later. If it will, maybe if it ends, I'm just trying to end here. Hmm. Oh man, Bill. Hold on, it's not. It's still live. <laughs> it's still not live. ending. Oh, I'm trying to end it, but it's not. Hot mic. Hot mic. I might have to. I wonder why it's not ending. It says it's waiting for the waiting for the uh, host. Oh, there it goes. Okay, now we're saying goodbye. <laughs> Love watching your training on your paid group. So informative. Thank you so much for being a, a member of my paid group, Sue. And thank you for all the members of, of my group for your love and support. It's uh, with your support that I'm able to live my dream. And now we're really going to say goodbye. Bye, everybody.